How's it going everyone? I'm Kyle and in this week's tutorial I'm going to teach you how to use the EV3 gyro to make accurate 90 degree turns for your robot. So in today's tutorial we're going to be making a simple program that allows you to make accurate and repeatable 90 degree turns with your robot that are nice and square and dependable. The application for this is obvious. Any FLL team or WRO team is going to have immediate interest in this because a lot of their programs involve turning and they need to be very consistent and reliable. Now in the name of consistency and reliability you need a gyro that's going to be accurate and reliable. So that means it needs to report an angle accurately and it also needs to be free from drift. If you'd like to know how to improve the accuracy of your gyro, I have a separate video which I'll link to up here that I recommend you, you watch uh, in conjunction with this video. And that'll help make your gyro more accurate and ultimately make the program that you make today be more effective in the context of the rest of your programming. To configure my robot Sirius for this program, I simply attach the Lego gyro to the side of the robot. Now let's make a program that uses the gyro sensor to make a 90 degree turn. So first you can take out a loop block and then take out a move tank block which will allow you to get your robot to start turning. So let's say I want to make a left turn. So I'll turn my left wheel on at 35% power and shut the right wheel off so it'll pivot around the right wheel when it turns. And then we're going to set the exit case to the gyro sensor, angle, and then choose greater than or equal to 90 degrees and then at the end we'll put a little stop that's all there is to it right pretty simple uh... well actually it's not that simple anyone who's actually ever used the gyro will know that if you try to set the value to ninety degrees the robot will actually end up over rotating every single time this is because the gyro sensor is a little bit behind with updating its angle value. The reason for this actually is really complicated and goes into a lot of the technology concerning inertial sensors, but to make a really long story really short, it's because the gyro doesn't actually measure angle directly, instead it measures the rate of rotation and then integrates that to get your accumulated angle as a derived value. So the result of that is the gyro ends up being behind. So what you're going to have to do is instead of setting it to 90 degrees, you might want to set it to 80 degrees, which I found is closest to an actual 90 degree turn. And if this doesn't quite work, you might you can actually play around with this a little bit. But for now, 80 degrees will be good enough. One other really important thing to bring up is that this inequality, the compare type, should be set to greater than or equal to, and not directly equal to. The reason for this is because the EV3 only updates with new information from its sensors every so often, although that's an un under exaggeration and reality updates at several hundred hertz. However, when your robot's rotating, it's very possible that the EV3 might not update in time to catch the 80 degree mark, so it might see 70 and then it might see 81. At that point, you've already passed 80, but the robot doesn't know it because it missed the 80 because you set it to look for 80 and only 80. So this greater than or equal to is a much better option. So if the robot, say, skips over 80 and goes straight to 81, that's still pretty close. Um, and you're also including that equal to case too, but you'll be sure that the robot's not going to miss the value and end up rotating indefinitely. So just an important programmer's trick to keep in mind for not just this application, but for a lot of programming applications. Here's what our standalone 90 degree, or should I say 80 degree, turn looks like in action. As far as we could tell, those 90 degree turns looked pretty accurate when they were just on their own. But that really doesn't give us a very clear picture of how accurate the turns actually are. That's why I made this program, which makes the robot repeatedly turn in a square using the gyro program. So you can see here that I start by initializing the angle at 80 degrees, which is the number that we identified before. Then it enters this infinite loop where the robot drives forward for one rotation, then uses the gyro sensor to make that 90 degree turn, stops and then increments the angle by 90 degrees and repeats the process. And this causes the robot to drive in a square pattern. And this is really good for actually testing how accurate your gyro turns are. So let's load this onto the robot and see what it looks like. This is a much more revealing test of the gyro sensor's accuracy. In the first few seconds, it appears that the robot traces the square path pretty closely. However, after about 10 seconds or so, it becomes clear that the square path the robot is taking is starting to shift. 
This is because the robot is consistently over-rotating ever so slightly on each individual turn. It's such a small amount that you wouldn't be able to tell from one or two turns. However, after 10 or more turns, that fraction of a degree of error starts to add up and accumulate and causes the robot's square path to shift over time. And after 3 minutes, the error has accumulated so much that the square has shifted 90 degrees from its original position, which is why the square appears to return back to its original orientation, albeit shifted ever so slightly to the left. This is the kind of test that you should perform anytime you want to test the accuracy of any kind of turning because it exposes any kind of small error that might be too small to see within one or two turns. Now if you're using this for an application like say FLL and you're using it in a program where you only have to make one, two, maybe three turns, this is an acceptable margin of error. However, if you're making a really long and elaborate program that has three, four, or even more turns, you might want to try a different method of turning that's more accurate or more finely calibrate your gyro turning program. So being able to make turns with a gyro is a really awesome tool for making your programs much more consistent and repeatable. However, another thing that involves the gyro that will make your turns more consistent and repeatable is using the gyro to get your robot to drive in a straight line. And that's what I'm going to be covering in next week's tutorial where I talk about how you can make a PID gyro program that keeps your robot very stable and driving in a very accurate straight line. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching my tutorial this week. If you haven't already, click here to check out my new book. It's called Building Smart LEGO Mindstorm EV3 Robots, and it's now available on Amazon. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this every Thursday. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, drop your suggestion in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.